Morning YouTube. I'm um, sorry I've been away for a couple of weeks. Unfortunately I haven't been well so um, but during that time I, uh, I set my... so we're back to talk about the solar panels. Um, there was some commentary around the second hand solar panels not performing as well as new panels um, and whether or not they were actually going to be cost effective enough. So what I did was I set up uh, we used Node Red to push some information out of the servo controller um, into an influx database so that we could actually see the performance of the panels. The problem is that when I did that, what you'll see, I'll zoom in on, let's go about that much. Um, what you can see is that actually the performance, the panels were outputting heaps of power right up until the battery was full, and as soon as the battery was full, they were backing off, which put me into a crappy situation where um, I wasn't able to actually show the performance of the panels, right? So what we've got here is the actual output of them, which doesn't really mean anything. Um, and then we've got the percentage total by the estimated you know, potential output. So if it's a 4.4 kilowatt um, array of panels, for example, um, then what percentage of that was actually being output? So this one's a really good example. Um, there's six panels at 370 watts there. Um, Oh, hang on, where's the other one? I'll go the 150 by 100 because I know how much is on that. So that's 4.4 kilowatts, and when it peaked, it was doing 82.7%. Right, so good example, right? That's that's about as good a performance as I think we can expect. So I'll just go back to the last seven days. Sorry, I'm doing this with my left hand, and I don't normally, don't normally do this with my left hand. Seven days. So what I did was we flattened the battery. I'm just going to bring them all back. We had to flatten the battery out. I'll tell you what, um, it, that goes against everything we ordinarily would do. We don't want to flatten this thing if we can help it. Um, but trying to get 1800 amp hours out, we got it down to 180 amps left in the battery, which is, you yeah, know, that's a fucking lot of power to discharge. So you can see on this green line, just here, that what do we, I think we got down to 10.3% is fairly low but that was the only way that we were going to get the solar panels to perform consistently for a day so you can see that is there so we'll zoom in on that all right fairly consistent um, we'll zoom in a little bit further so we get a little there we go uh, now during the middle in the middle of the day I realized that I actually left two of the arrays off but fortunately uh, that didn't really impact anything. Um, I'd neglected to switch two of the breakers back on. Um, it does, doesn't impact anything. They, you can see that they, were, they went into full production um, and they weren't facing in the wrong direction. But one of the really interesting things, I'm just going to swap hands here, one of the things that I found is the two top performers are actually, they're the new panels, which, is, which shouldn't surprise anybody, but one of the underperforming arrays is actually the 250 by 100 and that is new panels as well so you might be going well what the hell is that all about um i think i think this like testing is actually slightly flawed because the reason that they underperform is the angle that they're on so let me let me show you i'm, I'm going to go to my i'll go to the array that performs really well and then i'll go to the one that doesn't perform well and i'll show you what i mean so forgive the mess out here. Um, that's the array that performs really well. And you can see it's actually on a fair bit of an angle, right? Not quite as much as the panels on the house, but it's on a fairly reasonable angle. Let me go to the one that didn't perform too well. This is the one that didn't perform very well. And it's on a much, much shallower angle than the other one, right? And I'll show you what that actually results in. So it's not good. So if we jump in here and we just select We'll just select the two that we want. What have we got here? We've got production total. Don't worry about that, that doesn't work. Um, so we want the 100 was peaking at 80%, right? Which is the, that's the, uh, that's the array that's on the steeper angle. And then we've got the, this one, which is the other array made from the same panels, installed at the same time is only 70%. We're losing 10% of the performance of those new panels because they're simply on a shallower angle right and if we add in the grid tied solar which is a, you know it's a few years older now like it's got to be six or seven years old right that's at 74.5 percent which and it's on a slightly steeper angle so i think these ones are actually at the perfect angle and they get to 80 percent 
So actually the ones that are on my roof are at slightly too much of an angle. The other one that performs really well is the one that's on the shed roof um, facing uh, east. And these ones are getting 81%. So actually angle seems to be more important than anything else. But let's get, let's get to what we actually were hoping to do, which is the three kilowatt array, this one's made out of secondhand panels, is 75.7%, and it's on the same angle as the, as the new panels. So actually the secondhand panels are only lagging behind by 5%, which is not bad. Like that's, it's way better than what I thought it was gonna be. And actually what's more important um, has been the angle that the panels are on, and not whether or not they're new panels or old panels. Now does that mean that you should, buy secondhand panels I mean, look if you're gonna if you've got limited roof space don't buy secondhand panels focus on getting the angle right and put new panels in but if you've got lots of plenty of room and you've got cheap secondhand panels then shit yeah get get secondhand panels there's nothing wrong with them um, this one's a really good example of crappy angle and old panels so 35.2 percent because they're just sitting over leaning up against my fence so but what what I've come to understand from this little sort of experiment is that it is absolutely the angle that matters, right? Where you mount the panels is way more important than how old the panels are. And then the voltage, like I always go for high voltage um, and lower current across the, lot, the lines. Um, it seems to me that actually the MPPTs tend to like lower voltage and more current, but the inverters want more voltage, less current. So, you know, there seems to be a reverse in, the, in their relationship. Whether or not that's a, I can't, I can't sort of justify that at the moment. I've sort of got to spend some more time thinking about it. But um, yeah, it seems to me, it seems to me that secondhand panels are actually okay, right? There's nothing wrong with it. The problem is that they're smaller, generally. So you need more mounting gear. Um, like there's, there's more mucking around. You've got more interfaces, more connectors between the panels, more, more chance for it to go wrong. The newer panels tend to be much larger, um, so you, you don't need as much installation hardware. You've got less like you know connectors, MC4s and whatnot, so less places where you've got potential uh, for things to go wrong, um, and they just seem to be better value for money, right? They also work better, I've noticed, um, in, in like the early morning. So if we, we'll just jump to the next day. This morning we should have seen, what have we got? The last two days, let's have a look. Uh, can we switch them all on? Oh, that's not a good one. It's too overcast. We'll go back another day. Oh, seven days. That one there seems good. No, that's the bad one. Um, where's that three kilowatt Fronius 2? Oh, that one's not doing anything. Probably should fix that. Oh, that east facing. So, that east facing roof, if we compared this one with um, the 140 by 45, let me see, if, oh, can I do this? If I go, yeah. So, this is, a, this is an outlier, I'm not sure why this is. Um, the second hand panels are actually coming on earlier, and I think this is, this is, um, this is, that, this is that example where the, the inverter is actually running at a significantly higher voltage because we've got six or seven, I think there's seven panels east facing. So they come on aggressively earlier in the morning than the ones, um, the ones that are attached to the DC MPPT. But the newer panels are sitting, their, their output is just better to, to start with, right? So I think that this green uptick here is the fact that the Fronius inverter has got seven panels in a row and it can actually get going earlier than the MPPT can in this scenario. So that's that's probably more confusing than helpful, unfortunately. But I mean, that what, what I was trying to figure out is were the secondhand panels really underperforming? And they're not. They're surprisingly not underperforming at all. If anything, the problem that I'm seeing is that when panels are underperforming and really annoyed that the, uh, that the big array down the side of the house, the west facing array is underperforming, it's underperforming because of the angle of the panels, not because the panels are degraded. I'm just cutting in here during editing because um, I, you know, I've, I seem to have this thing in my head that this is underperforming because of the angle of the panels, but I suspect this has got a lot to do with it. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the video up where I am now, um, and I'm going to come out here and rip this bloody branch down. What I'll do is I'll chop it off there. There's a lady down the street 
who repots these things and sells them to people. Um, so I'll, I'll hack it off down low and give her a couple of trees out of it and uh, retest these panels and see if it really is the angle that's causing the issue or if it's something else. So stay tuned for that. I'll uh, yeah, I'll rip into that now and um, I'll, we're going to have to run the battery back down again. I mean, shit, that's, that's a bit of a pain in itself because I'm going to have to wait until the weather says that we've got three days of good sun. Um, and then, then in the lead up to that, I'll bring the battery right down to 10% again and we'll see what happens. Either that or I can shut down some of the other arrays so that we're charged. That might be a better idea. I'll do that. We'll shut down a couple of the other arrays, just charge off this one, see if the performance gets better. Is it really the angle or is it the fact that we've got some partial shading? I'm going to, yeah, I don't know. It's going to blast my idea out of the water, I think, if I find out that that's not the case, isn't it? We'll see what happens.